goes to try. Where does this go when they hope to get well? Where a wind lifts that helps with winnowing, and, the same moment, sends a ship on its way. Where anyone says only God is real. Yahoo! Where beyond where? A bright weaver's shuttle flashes back and forth, east-west, where are we? Maku! Maku! Like the sun saying where are we? As it weaves with the asking. The friend comes into my body looking for the center, unable to find it, draws a blade, strikes anywhere. There is a light seed grain inside. You fill it with yourself, or its size. I'm caught in this curling energy. Your hair, whoever's calm and sensible is insane. Do you think I know what I'm doing? That for one breath or half breath I belong to myself. As much as a pen knows what it's writing, or the ball can guess where it's going next. I six. Three. Percent emptiness and silence. The night air. On silence. In Persian poetry the poet often refers to himself or herself by name at the end of a poem as a sort of signature. Rumi's variation on this is to refer instead to sham, over a thousand poems end this way, or to silence. He gives the poetry to its true authorship, including the emptiness after as part of the poem. 500 odes conclude with Kamush, silence. Rumi is less interested in language, more attuned to the sources of it. He keeps asking Musum, who's making this music? He sometimes gives the wording over to the invisible two player. Let that musician finish this poem. Words are not important in themselves, but as resonators for a center. Rumi has a whole theory of language based on the reed flute made beneath everything we say, and within each note of the reed flute, lies a nostalgia for the reed bed. Language and music are possible only because we're empty, hollow, and separated from the source. All language is a longing for home. Why is there not a second tonality? He uses a note in praise of the craftsman's skill, which fashioned a bare cylinder into a maze, the intricate human form with its nine holes. The Reef Flute Song Listen to the story told by the reef of being separated. Since I was cut from the reed bed, I have made this crying sound. Anyone apart from someone he loves understands what I say. 17. Anyone pulled from a source longs to go back. At any gathering I am there, mingling in the laughing and grieving. A friend to each, but few will hear the secret hidden within the notes. No ears for that. Body flowing out of spirit. Spirit up from body. No concealing that mixing. But it's not given as to see the soul. The reef flute is fire, not wind. Be that empty. Hear the love fire tangled in the reed note, as bewilderment melts into wine. The reed is a friend to all who wants a fabric torn and drawn away. The reed is hurt and sad combining. Intimacy and longing for intimacy, one song. A disastrous surrender and a fine love, together. The one who secretly hears this is senseless. A tongue has one customer, the ear. A sugar cane food has such effect because it was able to make sugar in the reed bed. The sound it makes is for everyone. Days full of wanting, let them go by without worrying that they do. Stay where you are inside such a pure, hollow note. I.e. Every thirst gets satisfied except that of these fish, the mystics. Who swim a vast ocean of grace still somehow longing for it. No one lives in that without being nourished every day. 
But if someone doesn't want to hear the song of the read too, it's best to cut conversation short, say goodbye, and leave. A thirsty fish. I don't get tired of you. Don't grow weary of being compassionate toward me. All this thirst equipment must surely be tired of me, the water jar, the water carrier. I have a thirsty fish in me that can never find enough of what it's thirsty for. Show me the way to the ocean. Break these half measures, these small containers. All this fantasy and grief. Let my house be drowned in the wave that rose last night out of the courtyard hidden in the center of my chest. Joseph fell like the moon into my well. The harvest I expected was washed away. But no matter. 9. A fire has risen above my tombstone hat. I don't want learning, or guarantee, or respectability. I want this music and this dawn and the warmth of your cheek, against mine. The grief armies assemble, but I'm not going with them. This is how it always is when I finish a poem. A great silence overcomes me, and I wonder why I ever thought to use language. Enough words. How does a part of the world leave the world? How can wetness leave water? Don't try to put out a fire by throwing on more fire. Don't wash a wound with blood. No matter how fast you run, your shadow more than keeps up. Sometimes, it's in front. Only full, overhead sun diminishes your shadow. But that shadow has been serving you. What hurts you, blesses you. Darkness is your candle, your boundaries are your quest. I can explain this, but it would break the glass cover on your heart, and there's no fixing that. You must have shadow and light source both. Listen, and lay your head under the tree of awe. 20. When from that tree, feathers and wings sprout on you, be quieter than a dove. Don't open your mouth for even a clue. When a frog slips into the water, the snake cannot get it. Then the frog climbs back out and croaks, and the snake moves toward him again. Even if the frog learned to hiss, still the snake would hear through the hissy information he needed, the frog voice underneath. But if the frog could be completely silent, then the snake would go back to sleeping, and the frog could reach the barley. The soul lives there in the silent breath. And that grain of barley is such that, when you put it in the ground, it grows. Are these enough words, or shall I squeeze more juice from this? Who am I, my friend? This world which is made of our love for emptiness. Praise to the emptiness that blanks out existence. Existence. This place made from our love for that emptiness. Yet somehow comes emptiness, this existence goes. Praise to that happening, over and over. For years I pulled my own existence out of emptiness. Then one swoop, one swing of the arm, that work is over. Free of who I was, free of presence, free of dangerous fear, hope, free of mountainous wanting. 21. The here and now mountain is a tiny piece of a piece of straw blown off into emptiness. These words I'm saying so much begin to lose meaning. Existence, emptiness, mountain, straw, words and what they try to say swept out the window, down the slant of the roof. Quietness. Inside this new love, die. Your way begins on the other side. Become the sky. Take an axe to the prison wall. Escape. Walk out like someone suddenly born into color. Do it now. You're covered with thick clouds. Fly
slide out the side. Die. And be quiet. Quietness is the surest sign that you die. Your old life is a place of learning from silence. The deep of the moon comes out now. Sinai. Someone said, Sinai is dead. No small thing to say. He was not just a hat. Or a puddle that freezes overnight. Or a comb that cracks when you use it. Or a pod frustrating on the ground. 22. He was fine powder in a rough clay dish. He knew what those wheels were worth. A grain of barley. One he flung down. To the air. The inner soul, that presence of which most know nothing, about his character so ambiguous, he married that one to the beloved. His pure gold wine poured on the thick wine dregs. They mix and rise and separate again to meet down the road. Here from Pranardas, who lived in Ray, in Rum, heard from the mountain, each of us was very well. Silk must not be compared with striped canvas. We try to appear now like the final touch point for calligraphy. Your name has been erased from the roaring volume of fear. A just finishing candle. A candle is made to become entirely bright. In that annihilating moment it has no shadow. It is nothing but a song of secret pride and refuge. Look at this just finishing candle stuff is someone who is finally finished and greater in life. The pride and the shame we claim from those. 23. Craft changes to nothing. I said before that every craftsman searches for what's not there to crack the first trap. A builder looks for the rotten hole where the roof came in. Same subject. incident is about your fear of changing. Which means, praise to the end, is the pillar of knowledge and honor and peace. The mother and father are your learning and your remedial life, and desires and comforting habits. No listen to them. They seem to protect, but they imprison. They are your worst enemy. They make you afraid of living in emptiness. Someday they'll be scared of the light in that forest, remembering 
in your mistaken Karen. No and then give the wrong advice. Like a vest of chain mail in summer and peaceful in winter. 25. The body desires, in another way, are like an unpredictable associate. And that companion is helpful, because patient and patient is the patient is aware of the situation and takes the fragrance. Its patience that holds notes to the nail can be still making a good turn here, and patience is what the topic so does. In order to better fit Ellen on a shirt is the patience of the pain. Friendship and loyalty are patience with the strength of their connection. Feeling lonely and alone is the patient of friendship and patience. Feeling those who mix with God and also bless your throat. Say, anything that comes and goes, rises and sets, does not let it go. Live in the one who created the prophet, else will be left here and fire left to flutter itself out alone beside the road. in our actions and God's actions. We often ask, why did I do that? Or, why did I act like that? Usually our answer can be everything we do is God's creative action. But it doesn't always work that way. We look back and analyze the events of our lives. Another way of thinking, a backward and forward at once vision, that is not rational we understand it. Only God can understand it. Satan made the mistake, so God paid it all. Whereas Adam said to God, we did this for ourselves. Because of repentance, God asked Adam, who taught you to be like your God? Why didn't you defend yourself with that reason? Satan replied, I was afraid, and I wanted to be reverent. Whoever brings sweetness to the bitter is vexed. Whoever brings sweetness to the bitter is only sweet. Honor the king of God and you will kill men. Honor your friend. Satan wrote to me to say to the prophet, Love, tell an intimate man that is purified of adultery how we act freely and are yet compelled. Why do you speak so softly? Another shakes because you slap it away. You feel guilt for being an ass to God, but you feel guilty for the one, and what about the other? These are intellectual questions. But spirit knows that they matter to us. Omar once had a friend, a scientist, doing a job that he had thought of as causing empirical problems, but he could not call it Omar in the scenario that he created and wondered. Now I return to the point. Jesus declared, Wherever you are, but when have I ever left it? Satan enters God's prison, knowing it's God's palace. Sleep in God's unconsciousness. We wake in God's oblivion. We kiss God's ring. We laugh God's lightning. Fighting and peacefulness both take place very slowly. Only then in this complicated world tangle, that it really gets to be. Written down at the beginning of all us. Nothing. Mere emptiness. When you are with everyone but me, nor with no one. When you are with no one but me, nor with everyone. Instead of being so bound up with everyone, be everyone. When you become that many, you're nothing. Empty. No flag. I used to want buyers for my work. Now I wish someone would buy me away from work. I've made a lot of times to throw bound images, seen with Abraham, and Abraham's father, Hazar, who was also famous for icons. 28. I'm so tired of what I've been doing. Then one image without form came, and I saw, look for someone else to tend the shop. I'm out of the image making 
mean business. Finally I know the freedom of madness. A random image arrives. Ice cream. It disintegrates. Only love. Only love. And win. No flag. The food sack. What do you think you see an empty food sack hanging on a nail? His burning grows and others join him. Shouting and running in the low fire. An idle passerby comments, It's only an empty set. The king says, Leave. You want what you do not want. You are not a lover. A lover's food is the love of bread, not the bread. No one who really loves, loves existence. Lovers have nothing to do with existence. We collect the interest without the capital. No wings. Yet they fly all over the world. No hands. But they carry the polo ball from the field. 29. That bird has got a sniff of Rhea IPY. Now he needs baskets of pure vision. Lovers pitch tents on a field of nowhere. A nursing baby does not know the taste of roasted meat. To a spirit the food was sent I, food. To an Egyptian, marvelous funny. To an Israelite, clear. What is the highway to one of the baskets of weather? The night air. A man on his deathbed left in struggle for dividing up his book among his three sons. He had devoted his entire spirit to those sons. They stood like cypress trees around him. He told the town judge, whichever of my sons is the king, he had the inheritance. Then he died, and the judge turned to the priest, each of you must give some account of your laziness, so I can understand you who have your laziness. Mystics are experts in laziness. The only eye on him is that they continuously see God working all around them. The harvest keeps coming in, yet they never even did the plowing. Come on, say something about the ways you're lazy. Every spoken word is a covering for the inner self. A little curtain took no wider than a slice of bread meat to reveal under the exploding suns. Even if what is being said is trivial and wrong, the listener hears the source. One breeze comes, flirting, from across the garden, another from across the ash heap. Think how different the voices of the fox and the lion, and what they tell you. Hearing someone is lifting the lid off the cooking pot. You learn what's for supper. Or from people who know just by the smell. A sweet tea from a sour cheek cooked with vinegar. A man taps a clay pot before he buys it to know by the smell if it has a crack. The eldest of the three brothers told his blood. I can know a man by his voice, and if he won't speak, I wait three days, and then I know him explicitly. The second brother, I know him when he speaks, and if he won't talk, I strike up a conversation. Then whether he knows the trick, ask the judge. This reminds me of a mother who tells her child, when you're walking through the graveyard at night and you see a broken man, run again, and it will go away. But what, replies the child, when the dead man's mother has a way that to do the same thing. The second brother had no answer. The third then asked the younger brother, what if a man cannot be made to say anything? I sit in front of him in silence, and the latter made of patience, and 
I know that this is all of you. There's a window over your penis, mixing the rain in your arms. The youngest was, obviously, one, only breath. Not Christian or Jewish Muslim, not English, Jewish, Sufi, or Zen. Not any religion, or both or Christian. I am not from the East or the West, not out of the ocean or up. Yeah. 
along the beach, warming. Being high on the wall, a powerful wave that you can't see. Sound alert now. Open the air vent in the center of your chest and let the spirits fly in and out. Breathing in the air. When I see your face, the tone starts spinning. You appear, while studying wonders. I lose my place. Water turns pearly. Fire dies down and doesn't destroy. In your prairie emblem, I thought I wanted those three little hanging lamps. Leaves and manuscripts seem like rusty mirrors. Dirty eyes. Trees. New shapes appear, and the music is desired. Spring begins to move like a great wagon. Drive slowly. Walking along Cider Lane. Today, like every other day, clean up and see a Titan. Build open the door to the study and begin reading. Sit down a musical instrument. Let the beauty we love in love endure. There are hundreds of ways to kneel and kiss the ground. Out beyond ideas to follow the exciting way, there is a field. I'll meet you there. Then the sun breaks down the wet grass. The world is too full to talk about. Ideas, language, even the phrase each other doesn't make any sense. The bridge is not necessary to tell you. Don't go back to sleep. You must have don't go back to sleep. People are going back to sleep. The words you hear the two roads touch. The door is now wide open. Go back to sleep. I would love to kiss you. Now my loving is running toward my life jacket. Mark it. Let's buy it. Daylight. Full of promise. Sun rays turning, our souls are dancing with you, without fear, again. Can you see them when I whisper in your ear? Maybe I am dreaming. Spiritual or sexual, they wonder about you all the time, all the time. In the body of the world, they say, there is a soul in your back. We have dreams within each other that will never be said by anyone. There is light and wine, and sweethearts in the pomegranate flower. If you do not come, these do not matter. If you come, these do not matter. Spring is tight. Everyone has seen to fall in the face. The house is empty. You walk out to the garden to let me ask your name. Carry messages between Rose and Jasmine. Raising martyred plants from their shroud. 37. Their mouths open in gratitude, wanting to be kissed. The glow of the rose is seen when the angel lands inside. A leaf trembles. I tremble in the wind beauty like silk from Turkestan. The sensor fans into flame. Big Sunday from Holy Spirit. The trees are merry. Watch how husband and wife play chess games with their hands. Cloudy curls from Aiden are thrown across the lovers, as is the marriage custom. The scent of Joseph's shirt comes to take us. A red carnelian of Yemeni laughter is heard by Muhammad in Mecca. Talk about this and that. There's no rest except on these branching moments. Stress of steam. Light again, and the ones up to make peace. Bring light. Change the way you live. From the ocean back, blind first in each step. Two or three of the long dead wake up. Two or three drunks become lion hunters. 
sunlight washes a dark face. The flower is less cool than dark face. Meadow grass and garden ground grow damp again. A strong light like fingers massages our head. No dividing these fingers from end those. Draw back the lost bolt. One level grows into another. Heat creeps into everything. The passion is hot soil. Clothing tears into the air. Souls tune threads of steam. Never so happy as out in the light. Point create. The steam bath. Steam fills the bath, and frozen figures fall open their eyes. Red and round, narcissus eyes that see in longer posters, and new ears that love the details of any story. The figures dance like friends diving and coming up and diving again. Steam spills into the courtyard. It's the noise of resurrection. They move from one corner laughing across to the opposite corner. No one knows this house team opens the rows of each mind. Fills every beggar's cup solid with money. Pulled out a basket. It fills up so well that emptiness becomes what you want. The judge and the accused forget the sentencing. Someone stands up to speak, and the wood of the table becomes holy. The tavern in that second is actually made of wine. The dead drink it in. Then the steam evaporates. Figures sink back into the wall. Eyes blank. Ears just fine. Now it's happening again, outside. The garden fills with bird and leaf sounds. We stand in the wake of this chattering and grow hairy. How can anyone say what happened? Even if each of us hits a pen a hundred million times to ink. The ground cries out. I feel like the ground, astonished with what the atmosphere has brought to it. What I know is growing inside me. Rain makes every molecule pregnant with a mystery. We grow with women's flavor. The ground cries out. I am and glorious here. Breaks open, and a camel is worn out of it. A branch falls from a tree, and there's a snake. 39. Muhammad said, a faithful believer is a good camel, always looking to its master, takes perfect care. He brands the flank. He sets out hay. He binds the knees with reason of a rule, and now he loosens all bindings and lets his camel dance, tearing the bridle and ripping the blanket. The Self sprouts new forms, while the camp dances over them. Imaginary plants no one has thought of, but all these new seeds, no matter how they try, do not reveal the other sun. They hide it. Still, the effort is joy, one by one to keep uncovering. Pearls in oyster shells. Unfold your own myth. Who gets up early to discover the moment light begins? Who finds his hair circling, bewildered, like Adam? Who comes to a spring thirsty and sees the meat reflected in it? Who, like Jacob blind with grief and age, smells the shirt of his lost son and can see again? Who lets a bucket down and brings up a flowing prophet? Her like Moses goes for fire and finds what burns inside the sunrise. Jesus slips into a house to escape enemies, and opens the door to the other world. Solomon cuts open a fish, and there's a gold ring. Omar storms in to kill the prophet and leaves with blessings. Chase a deer and end up everywhere. An oyster opens his mouth to swallow one drop. Now there's a pearl. 40. A vagrant wanders empty ruins. Suddenly he's wealthy. But don't be satisfied with stories, how things have gone with others. Unfold your own myth, without complicated explanation, so everyone will understand the passage.
We have opened you. Start walking toward shams. Your legs will get heavy and tired. Then comes the moment of feeling the wings you've grown, lifting. Not a day on any calendar. Spring, and everything outside is growing, even the tall cypress tree. You must not leave this place. Around the lip of the cup we share, these words. My life is not mine. If someone were to play music, it would have to be very sweet. We're drinking wine, not in the We're sleeping it off, not in bed. This day is outside living and dying. Give up wanting what other people have. That way you're safe. Where, where can I be safe? You ask. This is not a day for asking questions, not a day on any calendar. This day is conscious of itself. This day is a lover, bread, and gentleness, more manifest than saying can say. Thoughts take form with words, but this daylight is beyond and before thinking and imagining. Those two. Four feet. They are so thirsty, but this gives smoothness to water. Their mouths are dry, and they are tired. The rest of this poem is too blurry for them to read. Flutes for dancing. It's lucky to hear the flutes for dancing coming down the road. The ground is glowing. The table set in the yard. We will drink all this wine tonight because it's spring. It is. It's a growing sea, where clouds over the sea, are flecks of matter in the ocean when the ocean seems lit from within. I know I'm drunk when I start this ocean talk. Would you like to see the moon split in half with one throw? The shape of my tongue. This mirror inside me shows. I can't say what, but I can not know. I run from body, I run from spirit, I do not belong anywhere. I'm not alive, you smell the decay, you talk about my craziness. Listen rather to the honed blade sanity I say. This gourd head on top of a dervish robe, do I look like someone you know? 42. This dipper gourd full of liquid, upside down and not spilling a drop. For if it spills, it drops into God and rounds into pearls. I form a cloud over that ocean and gather spellings. When Shams is here, I reign. After a day or two, lilies sprout, the shape of my tongue. The grasses. The same wind that uproots trees makes the grasses shine. The lordly wind loves the weakness and the lowness of grasses. Never brag of being strong. The axe doesn't worry how thick the branches are. It cuts them to pieces. But not the leaves. It leaves the leaves alone. A flame doesn't consider the size of the woodpile. A butcher doesn't run from a flock of sheep. What is form in the presence of reality? Very feeble. Reality keeps the sky turned over like a cup above us, revolving. Who turns the sky wheel? The universal intelligence. And the motion of the body comes from the spirit like a water wheel that's held in a stream. The inhaling exhaling is from spirit, now angry, now peaceful. 43. Wind destroys, and wind protects. There is no reality but God. Says the completely surrendered shape, who is an ocean for all beings. The levels of creation are straws in that ocean. The movement of the straws comes from an agitation in the water. When the ocean wants the straws calm, it sends them close to shore. When it wants them back in the deep surge, it does with them as the wind does with the grasses. This never ends. The 
Sheikh WHO played with children. A certain young man was asking around, I need to find a wise person. I have a problem. A bystander said, there's no one with intelligence in our town except that man over there playing with the children, the one riding the stick horse. He has keen, fiery insight and vast dignity like the night sky, but he conceals it in the madness of child's play. The young seeker approached the children, Dear father, you who have become as a child, tell me a secret. Go away. This is not a day for secrets. But please, ride your horse this way, just for a minute. The sheep play galloped over. Speak quickly. I can't hold this one still for long. Whoops. Don't let him kick you. This is a wild one. 44. The young man felt he couldn't ask his serious question in the crazy atmosphere, so he joked, I need to get married. Is there someone suitable on this street? There are three kinds of women in the world. Two are griefs, and one is a treasure to the soul. The first, when you marry her, is all yours. The second is half yours, and the third is not yours at all. Now get out of here, before this horse kicks you in the head. Easy now. The shape rode off among the children. The young man shouted, tell me more about the kinds of women. Quote. The shape. On his cane horsey, came closer, the virgin of your first love is all yours. She will make you feel happy and free. A childless widow is the second, she will be half yours. The third, who is nothing to you, is a married woman with a child. By her first husband she had a child, and all her love goes into that child. She will have no connection with you. Now watch out. Back away. I'm going to turn this rascal around. He gave a loud whoop and rode back, calling the children around him. One more question. Master. The shake circle. What is it? Quickly. That rider over there needs me. I think I'm in love. What is this playing that you do? Why do you hide your intelligence so? The people here want to put me in charge. They want me to be judge, magistrate, and interpreter of all the texts. 45. The knowing I have doesn't want that. It wants to enjoy itself. I am a plantation of sugar cane, and at the same time I'm eating the sweetness. Knowledge that is acquired is not like this. Those who have it worry if audiences like it or not. It's a bait for popularity. Disputational knowing wants customers. It has no soul. Robust and energetic before a responsive crowd, it slumps when no one is there. The only real customer is God. Chew quietly your sweet sugarcane God love, and stay playfully childish. Your face will turn rosy with illumination like the redbud flowers. Let the lover be disgraceful, crazy, absent-minded. Someone sober will worry about things going badly. Let the lover be. All day and night, music, a quiet, bright read song. If it fades, we fade. 46. 5. X feeling separation. Don't come near me. On separation. We know separation so well because we've tasted the union. The reef flute makes music because it has already experienced changing mud and rain and light into sugarcane. Longing becomes more poignant if in the distance you can't tell whether your friend is going away or coming back. The pushing away pulls you in. Sometimes I forget completely. 
Sometimes I forget completely what companionship is. Unconscious and insane, I spill sad energy everywhere. My story gets told in various ways. A romance, a dirty joke, a war, a vacancy. Divide up my forgetfulness to any number, it will go around. These dark suggestions that I follow, are they part of some plan? Friends, be careful, don't come near me out of curiosity, or sympathy. A man and a woman arguing. One night in the desert a poor Bedouin woman has this to say to her husband. 47. Everyone is happy and prosperous, except us. We have no bread, we have no spices, we have no water jug, we barely have any clothes, no blankets. For the night, we fantasize that the full moon is a cake. We reach for it, we're an embarrassment even to the beggars. Everyone avoids us. Arab men are supposed to be generous warriors, but look at you, stumbling around. If some guest were to come to us, we'd steal his rags when he fell asleep. Who is your guide that leads you to this? We can't even get a handful of lentils. Ten years worth of nothing, that's what we are. She went on and on. If God is abundant, we must be following an imposter. Who's leading us? Some fake. That always says, tomorrow, illumination. Will bring you treasure, tomorrow. As everyone knows, that never comes. Though I guess, it happens very rarely, sometimes, that a disciple following a DM poster can somehow surpass the pretender. But still I want to know what this deprivation says about us. The husband replied, finally. How long will you complain about money and our prospects for money? The torrent of our life has mostly gone by. Don't worry about transient things. Think how the animals live. The dove on the branch giving thanks. The glorious singing of the nightingale. The gnat, the elephant, every living thing trusts in God for its nourishment. These pains that you feel are messengers. Listen to them, turn them to sweetness. The night, 48, is almost over. You were young once, and content. Now you think about money all the time. You used to be that money. You were a healthy vine. Now you're a rotten fruit. You ought to be growing sweeter and sweeter, but you've gone bad. As my wife, you should be equal to me. Like a pair of boots, if one is too tight, the pair is of no use. Like two folding doors, we can't be mismatched. A lion does not mate with a wolf. So this man who was happily poor scolded his wife until daybreak, when she responded, Don't talk to me about your high station. Look how you act. Spiritual arrogance is the ugliest of all things. It's like a day that's cold and snowy, and your clothes are wet too. It's too much to bear. And don't call me your mate, you fraud. You scramble after scraps of bone with the dogs. You're not as satisfied as you pretend. You're the snake and the snake charmer at the same time, but you don't know it. You're charming a snake for money, and the snake is charming you. You talk about God a lot, and you make me feel guilty by using that word. You better watch out, that word will poison you, if you use it to have power over me. So the rough volume of her talking fell on the husband, and he fought back. Woman. 49. This poverty is my deepest joy. This fair way of life is honest and beautiful. We can hide nothing when we're like this. 
You say I'm really arrogant and greedy, and you say I'm a snake charmer and a snake, but those nicknames are for you. In your anger and your wantings you see those qualities in me. I want nothing from this world. You're like a child that has turned round and round, and now you think the house is turning. It's your eyes that see wrong. Be patient, and you'll see the blessings and the Lord's light in how we live. This argument continued throughout the day, and even longer. R underscore. A night full of talking that hurts, my worst held back secrets. Everything has to do with loving and not loving. This night will pass. Then we have work to do. A N empty garlic. You miss the garden, because you want a small fig from a random tree. You don't meet the beautiful woman. You're joking with an old crone. It makes me want to cry how she detains you, stinking mouth, with a hundred talents, putting her head over the roof edge to call down. So, tasteless fig, fold over fold, empty as dry rotten garlic. She has you tight by the belt, even though there's no flour and no milk inside her body. Death will open your eyes to what her face is leather spine of a black lizard no more advice let yourself be silently drawn by the stronger pull of what you really love the diver's clothes lying empty you're sitting here with us but you're also out walking in a field of dawn you are yourself the animal we hunt when you come with us on the hunt you're in your body like a plant is solid in the ground, yet you're wind. You're the diver's clothes lying empty on the beach. You're the fish. In the ocean are many bright strands and many dark strands like veins that are seen when a wing is lifted up. Your hidden self is blood and those, those veins that are root strings that make ocean music, not the sad edge of surf, but the sound of no shore. Red Shirt stories about him. Pharaoh and the whole Egyptian world collapsed for such a Joseph. I'd gladly spend years getting word of him, even third or fourth hand. My worst habit. My worst habit is I get so tired of winter I become a torture to those I'm with. If you're not here, nothing grows. I lack clarity. My words tangle and not up. How to cure bad water? Send it back to the river. How to cure bad habits? Send me back to you. When water gets caught in habitual whirlpools, dig a way out through the bottom to the ocean. There is a secret medicine given only to those who hurt so hard they can't hope. The hopers would feel slighted if they knew. Look as long as you can at the friend you love, no matter whether that friend is moving away from you or coming back toward you. Sack. Don't let your throat tighten with fear. Take sips of breath all day and night, before death closes your mouth. 52. Dissolver of Sugar. Dissolver of sugar, dissolve me, if this is the time. Do it gently with a touch of a hand, or a look. Every morning I wait at dawn. That's when it's happened before. Or do it suddenly like an execution. How else can I get ready for death? You breathe without a body like a spark. You breathe, and I begin to feel lighter.
You keep me away with your arm, but the keeping away is pulling me in. Hail sunlight, hail the wall. Love moves away, the light changes. I need more grace than I thought. 53 minus 44 controlling the desire body. 6. How did you kill your rooster? Awesome. On the desire body. Suffice called the wanting knocks. From the urgent way lovers want each other to the sanius and search for truth, all moving is from the mover. Every pull draws us to the ocean. Rumi says it's important to live the wantings as they come and not get stuck somewhere, stagnant. He was asked once what trail do about a young man caught doing some indecent act. The story doesn't mention what exactly masturbation, keeping calming, whatever wild wantings young men think to do. Rumi told them not to worry about it. It just means he's throwing his feathers. The dangerous case is a kid who doesn't do indecent acts, who then leaves the nest without feathers. One flap and the cat has him. Be careful, Rumi suggests, about shaming sexual behavior in an adolescent or anyone who hasn't yet had his or her fill of erotic trancing. Often, the closest we come to surrender is orgasm. In Rumi's symbology the rooster is a symbol for that energy. So how did Rusum kill his rooster? By dissolving into the clay. The knobs are energies that keep us moving, stopping nowhere. Union with the divine continually unfolds. Next to the glowing drive-in movie, the junkyard's rusted stacks of old desire bodies. Let the beauty we love keep turning into action, transmuting to another, another. What have I ever lost by dying? Rumi asks. Exchanging one set of knobs for the next. Chop rooster energy becomes another dining room story. Particles of praise shine in the sunlight. Anything you grab hold of on the bank breaks with the river's pressure. When you do things from your soul, the river itself moves through you. Fresh. Ness and a deep joy are signs of the current. 54. Sexual urgency, what a woman's laughter can do, and the nature of true virility. Someone offhand to the Caliph of Egypt, the king of Mosul has a concubine like no other, more beautiful than I can describe. She looks like this. He draws her likeness on paper. The Caliph drops his cup. Immediately he sends his captain to Mosul with an army of thousands. The siege goes on for a week, with many casualties, the walls and the towers unsteady, as soft as wax. The king of Mosul sends an envoy. Why this killing? If you want the city, I will leave and you can have it. If you want more wealth, that's even easier. The captain takes out the piece of paper with the girl's picture on it. This. The strong king of Mosul is quick to reply. Lead her out. The idol belongs with the idolater. When the captain sees her, he falls in love like the caliph. Don't laugh at this. This loving is also part of infinite love, without which the world does not evolve. Objects move from inorganic to vegetation to cells endowed with spirit through the urgency of every love that wants to come to perfection. This captain thinks the soil looks fertile. So he sows his seed. Sleeping, he sees the girl in a dream. He makes love to her image, and his semen spurts out. After a while he begins to wake. Slowly he senses the girl is not there. I have given my seed into nothing. I shall put this tricky woman to a test. 55. 
A leader who is not captain of his body is not one to be honored, with his semen spilled so in the sand. Now he loses all control. He doesn't care about the Caliph, or about DYMG. I am in love, he says. Do not act in such heat. Take counsel with a master. But the captain couldn't. His infatuation is a blackwater wave carrying him away. Something that doesn't exist makes a phantom appear in the darkness of a well, and the phantom itself becomes strong enough to throw actual lions into the hole. More advice. It is dangerous to let other men have intimate connections with the women in your care. Cotton and fire sparks. Those are, together, difficult, almost impossible, to turn. The captain does not return straight to the caliph, but instead camps in a secluded meadow. Blazing, he can't tell ground from sky. His reason is lost in a drumming sound, worthless radish and son of a radish. The caliph himself a gnat, nothing. But just as this cultivator tears off the woman's pants and lies down between her legs, his penis moving straight to the mark, there's a great tumult and a rising cry of soldiers outside the tent. He leaps up with his bare bottom shining and runs out, scimitar in hand. A black lion from a nearby swamp has gotten in among the horses. Chaos. The lion jumping 20 feet in the air, tents billowing like an ocean. The captain quickly approaches the lion, splits his head with one blow, and now he's running back to the woman's tent. S. When he stretches out her beauty again, his penis goes even more erect. The engagement, the coming together, is as with the lion. His penis stays erect all through it, and it does not scatter semen feebly. The beautiful one is amazed at his virility. Immediately, with great energy she joins with his energy, and their two spirits go out from them as one. Whenever two are linked this way, there comes another from the unseen world. It may be through birth, if nothing prevents conception, but a third has come, when two unite in love, or in hate. The intense qualities born of such joining appear in the spiritual world. You will recognize them when you go there. Your associations bear progeny. Be careful, therefore, wait, and be conscious, before you go to meet anyone. Remember there are children to consider. Children you must live with and tend to, born of your emotions with another, entities with a form, and speech, and a place to live. They are crying to you even now. You have forgotten us. Come back. Be aware of this. A man and a woman together always have a spiritual result. The captain was not so aware. He fell, and stuck like a gnat in a pot of buttermilk, totally absorbed in his love affair. Then, just as suddenly, he's uninterested. He tells the woman, don't say a word of this to the caliph. He takes her there, and the caliph is smitten. She's a hundred times more beautiful than he's imagined. A certain man asks an eloquent teacher, what is true and what false? This is false. A bat hides from the sun, not from the idea of the sun. S5. It's the idea that puts fear in the bat and leads it deeper into the cave. You have an idea of an enemy that attaches you to certain companions. Moses, the inner light of revelation, lit up the top of Sinai, but the mountain could not hold that light. 
Don't deceive yourself that way. Having the idea is not living the reality of anything. There's no courage in the idea of battle. The bathhouse wall is covered with pictures and much talk of heroism. Try to make an idea move from ear to eye. Then your woolly ears become as subtle as fibers of light. Your whole body becomes a mirror, all eye and spiritual breathing. Let your ear lead you to your lover. So the Caliph is mightily in love with this girl. His kingdom vanishes like lightning. If your loving is numb, know this. When what you own can vanish, it's only a dream, a vanity, breath through a mustache. It would have killed you. There are those that say, nothing lasts. They're wrong. Every moment they say, if there were some other reality, I would have seen it. I would know about it. Because a child doesn't understand a chain of reasoning, should adults give up being rational? If reasonable people don't feel the presence of love within the universe, that doesn't mean it's not there. Joseph's brothers did not see Joseph's beauty, but Jacob never lost sight of it. Moses at first saw only a wooden staff, but to his other seeing it was a viper and a cause of panic. 58. Eyesight is in conflict with inner knowing. Moses's hand is a hand and a source of light. These matters are as real as the infinite is real, but they seem religious fantasies to some, to those who believe only in the reality of the sexual organs and the digestive tract. Don't mention the friend to those. To others, sex and hunger are fading images, and the friend is more constantly, solidly here. Let the former go to their church, and you go to ours. Don't talk long to skeptics or to those who claim to be atheists. So the Caliph has the idea of entering the beautiful woman, and he comes to her to do his wanting. Memory raises his penis, straining it in thought toward the pushing down and the lifting up which make that member grow large with delight. But as he actually lies down with the woman, there comes to him a decree from God to stop these voluptuous doings. A very tiny sound, like a mouse might make. The penis droops, and desire slips away. He thinks that whispering sound is a snake rising off the straw mat. The girl sees his drooping and sails into fits of laughing at the marvelous thing. She remembers the captain killing the lion with his penis standing straight up. Long and loud her laughter. Anything she thinks of only increases it, like the laughter of those who eat hashish. Everything is funny. Every emotion has a source and a key that opens it. The Caliph is curious. He draws his sword. What's so amusing? Tell me everything you're thinking. 59. Don't hold anything back. At this moment I'm clairvoyant. If you lie, I'll behead you. If you tell the truth, I'll give you your freedom. He stacks seven Qurans on top of each other and swears to do as he says. When she finally gets hold of herself, the girl tells all, in great detail. Of the camp in the meadow, the killing of the lion, the captain's return to the tent with his penis still hard as the horn of a rhino. And the contrast with the caliph's own member sinking down because of one mouse whisper. Hidden things always come to light. Do not so bad see. Be sure, they'll come up. Rain and the sun's heat make them rise into the air. Spring comes after the fall of the leaves, which is proof enough of the fact of resurrection. Secrets come out in spring, out from earth lips into leaf. Worries become wine headaches, but where did the wine come from? Think.
A branch of blossoms does not look like seed. A man does not resemble semen. Jesus came from Gabriel's breath, but he is not in that form. The grape doesn't look like the vine. Loving actions are the seed of something completely different, a living place. No origin is like where it leads to. We can't know where our pain is from. We don't know all that we've done. Perhaps it's best that we don't. Nevertheless we suffer for it. The Caliph comes back to his clarity. In the pride of my power I took this woman from another, so of course, someone came to knock on my door. Whoever commits adultery is a pimp for his own wife. 6 so. If you cause injury to someone, you draw that same injury toward yourself. My treachery made my friend a traitor to me. This repetition must stop somewhere. Here, in an act of mercy. I'll send you back to the captain, saying another of my wives is jealous, and since the captain was brave enough to bring you back from Mosul, he shall have you in marriage. This is the virility of a prophet. The caliph was sexually impotent, but his manliness was most powerful. The kernel of true manhood is the ability to abandon sensual indulgences. The intensity of the captain's libido is less than a husk compared to the caliph's nobility in ending the cycle of sowing lust and reaping secrecy and vengefulness. Tattooing in Q-A-Z-W-I-N In Coswin, they have a custom of tattooing themselves for good luck, with a blue ink, on the back of the hand, the shoulder, wherever. A certain man there goes to his barber and asks to be given a powerful, heroic, blue lion on his shoulder blade. And do it with flair. I've got Leo ascending, I want plenty of blue. But as soon as the needle starts pricking, he howls, what are you doing? The lion, which limb did you start with? I began with the tail. Well, leave out the tail. That lion grump is in a bad place for me. It cuts off my wind. The barber continues, and immediately the man yells out, Ooh! Which part now? Doc, let's do a lion with no ears this time. Me here. The barber shakes his head, and once more the needle, and once more the wailing, where are you now? I like a lion without a belly. The belly. The master lion maker. Stands for a long time with his fingers in his teeth. Finally, he throws the needle clown. No one has ever been asked to do such a thing. To create a lion without a tail or a head or a stomach. God himself could not do it. Brother, stand the pain. Escape the poison of your impulses. The sky will bow to your beauty, if you do. Learn to light the candle. Rise with the sun. Turn away from the cave of your sleeping. That way a thorn expands to a rose. A particular glows with the universal. What is it to praise? Make yourself particles. What is it to know something of God? Burn inside that presence. Burn up. Copper melts in the healing elixir. So melt yourself in the mixture that sustains existence. You tighten your two hands together, determined not to give up saying, I, and, we. This tightening blocks you. 62. The center of the fire. No more wine for me. I'm past the lighting in the thick red and the clear white. I'm thirsty for my own blood as it moves into a field of action. Draw the keenest blade you have and strike, until the head circles about the body. Make a mountain of skulls like that. 
split me apart. Don't stop at the mouth. Don't listen to anything I say. I must enter the center of the fire. Fire is my child but I must be consumed and become fire. Why is there crackling and smoke? Because the firewood and the flames are still talking. You are too dense. Go away. You are too wavering. I have solid form. In the blackness those two friends keep arguing. Like a wanderer with no face. Like the most powerful bird in existence sitting on its perch, refusing to move. What can I say to someone so curled up with wanting, so constricted in his love? Break your pitcher against the rock. We don't need any longer to haul pieces of the ocean around. We must drown, away from heroism, and descriptions of heroism. Like a pure spirit lying down, pulling its body over it, like a bride her husband for a cover to keep her warm. Someone who goes with half a loaf of bread to a small place that fits like a nest around him. Someone who wants no more, who's not himself longed for by anyone else. He is a letter to everyone. You open it. It says, lie. The mystery does not get clearer by repeating the question, nor is it bought with going to amazing places. Until you've kept your eyes and your wanting still for 50 years, you don't begin to cross over from confusion. Muhammad and the Huge Eater Usam demands that we begin Book 5. Zia Hak, the Radiance of Truth, Usamunan, Master to the Pure Masters, if my human throat were not so narrow, I would praise you as you should be praised, in some language other than this word language, but a domestic fowl is not a falcon. We must mix the varnish we have and brush it on. I'm not talking to materialists. When I mention Musam, I speak only to those who know spiritual secrets. Praise is simply drawing back the curtains to let his qualities in. The Sun, 64, of course, remains apart from what I say. What the sayer of praise is really praising is himself, by saying implicitly, my eyes are clear. Likewise, someone who criticizes is criticizing himself, saying implicitly, I can't see very well with my eyes so inflamed. Don't ever feel sorry for someone who wants to be the sun, that other sun, the one that makes rotten things fresh. And don't ever envy someone who wants to be this world. Usum is the sun I mean. He can't be understood with the mind, or said, but we'll stumble and stagger trying to. Just because you can't drink all that falls doesn't mean you give up taking sips of rainwater. If the nut of the mystery can't be held, at least let me touch the shell. Usum, refresh my words, your words. My words are only a husk to your knowing, an earth atmosphere to your enormous spaces. What I say is meant only to point to that, to you, so that whoever ever hears these words will not grieve that they never had a chance to look. Your presence draws me out from vanity and imagination and opinion. Ah is the sap that will heal our eyes. And keen, constant listening. Stay out in the open like a day calm lifting its arms. Don't bore mouse holes. 65. In the ground, arguing inside some doctrinal labyrinth. That intellectual warp and whip keeps you wrapped in blindness. And four other characteristics keep you from loving. The Quran calls them four birds. Say Bismillah, in the name of God, and chop the heads off those mischief birds.
the rooster of lust, the peacock of wanting to be famous, the crow of ownership, and the duck of urgency, kill them and revive them in another form, changed and harmless. There is a duck inside you. Her bill is never still, searching through dry and wet alike, like the robber in an empty house cramming objects in his sack, pearls, chickpeas, anything. Always thinking, there's no time, I won't get another chance. A true person is more calm and deliberate, he or she doesn't worry about interruptions. But that duck is so afraid of missing out that it's lost all generosity, and frighteningly expanded its capacity to take in food. A large group of unbelievers once came to see Muhammad, knowing he would feed them. Muhammad told his friends, divide these guests among you and tend to them. Since you are all filled with me, it will be as though I am the host. Each friend of Muhammad chose a guest, but there was one huge person left behind. He sat in the entrance of the mosque like thick dregs in a cup. So Muhammad invited the man to his own household, where the enormous son of a goose turk ate everything. 66. The milk of seven goats and enough food for 18 people. The others in the house were curious. When the man went to bed, the maid slammed the door behind him and chained it shut, out of meanness and resentment. Around midnight, the man felt several strong urges at once. But the door, he works it, puts a blade through the crack. Nothing. The urgency increases. The room contracts. He falls back into a confused sleep and dreams of a desolate place, since he himself is such a desolate place. So, dreaming he's by himself, he squeezes out a huge amount, and another huge amount. But he soon becomes conscious enough to know that the covers he gathers around him are full of shit. He shakes with spasms of the shame that usually keeps men from doing such things. He thinks, my sleep is worse than my being awake. The waking is just full of poo. My sleep is all this. Now he's crying, bitterly embarrassed, waiting for dawn and the noise of the door opening, hoping that somehow he can get out without anyone seeing him as he is. All shorten it. The door opens. He's saved. Muhammad comes at dawn. He opens the door and becomes invisible so the man won't feel ashamed, so he can escape and wash himself and not have to face the door opener. Someone completely absorbed in all alike Muhammad can do this. Muhammad had seen all that went on in the night, but he held back from letting the man out, until all happened as it needed to happen. Many actions which seem cruel are from a deep friendship. Many demolitions are actually renovations. Later, a meddlesome servant brought Muhammad the bedclothes. Look what your guest has done. Muhammad smiles, himself a mercy given to all beings, bring me a bucket of water. Everyone jumps up, no, let us do this, we live to serve you, and this is the kind of handwork we can do. Yours is the inner hard work. I know that, but this is an extraordinary occasion. A voice inside him is saying, there is great wisdom in washing these bedclothes. Wash them. Meanwhile, the man who soiled the covers and fled is returning to Muhammad's house. He has left behind an amulet that he always carries. He enters and sees the hands of God washing his incredibly dirty linen. 
he forgets the amulet, a great love suddenly enters him. He tears his shirt open. He strikes his head against the wall and the door. Blood pours from his nose. People come from other parts of the house. He's shrieking, stay away. He hits his head, I have no understanding. He prostrates himself before Muhammad. You are the whole. I am a despicable, tiny, meaningless piece. I can't look at you. He's quiet and quivering with remorse. 68. Muhammad bends over and holds him and caresses him and opens his inner knowing. The cloud weeps, and then the garden sprouts. The baby cries, and the mother's milk flows. The nurse of creation has said, let them cry a lot. This rain weeping and sun burning twine together to make us grow. Keep your intelligence white hot and your grief glistening, so your life will stay fresh. Cry easily like a little child. Let body needs dwindle and soul decisions increase. Diminish what you give your physical self. Your spiritual eye will begin to open. When the body empties and stays empty, God fills it with musk and mother of pearl. That way a man gives his dung and gets purity. Listen to the prophets, not to some adolescent boy. The foundation and the walls of the spiritual life are made of self-denials and disciplines. Stay with friends who support you in these. Talk with them about sacred texts, and how you're doing, and how they're doing, and keep your practices together. Fasting. There's hidden sweetness in the stomach's emptiness. We are loose, no more, no less. If the sound box is stuffed full of anything, no music. If the brain and the belly are burning clean with fasting, every moment a new song comes out of the fire. The fog clears, and new energy makes you run up the steps in front of you. Be emptier and cry like reed instruments cry. Emptier, write secrets with the reed pen. When you're full of food and drink, an ugly metal statue sits where your spirit should. When you fast, 69. Good habits gather like friends who want to help. Fasting is Solomon's ring. Nor give it to some illusion and lose your power, but even if you have, if you've lost all will and control, they come back when you fast, like soldiers appearing out of the ground, penance at bellying above them. A table descends to your tents, Jesus' table. Expect to see it, when you fathom. This table spread with other food, better than the broth of cabbages. Bismillah. It's a habit of yours to walk slowly. You hold a grudge for years. With such heaviness, how can you be modest? With such attachments, can you expect to arrive anywhere? Be wide as the air to learn a secret. Right now your equal portions play in water, thick mud. Abraham learned how the sun and moon and the stars all set. He said, no longer will I try to assign partners for God. You are so weak, give up to grace. The ocean takes care of each wave till it gets to shore. You need more help than you know. You're trying to live your life in open scaffolding. Say this Mila, in the name of God. As the priest is with a knife when he offers an animal. This Mila your old self to find your real name. Mean yourself. Little by little, mean yourself. This is the gist of what I have to say. 70. From an embryo, whose nourishment comes in the blood, moved to an infant drinking milk, to a child on solid food, to a searcher after wisdom, to a hunter of more invisible game. 
think how it is to have a conversation with an embryo. You might say, the world outside is vast and intricate. There are wheat fields and mountain passes, and orchards in bloom. At night there are millions of galaxies, and in sunlight the beauty of friends dancing at a wedding. You ask the embryo why he, or she, stays cooped up in the dark with eyes closed. Listen to the answer. There is no, other world. I only know what I've experienced. You must be hallucinating. After the meditation, now I see something in my listeners that won't let me continue this way. The ocean flows back in and puts up a foam barrier. And then withdraws. After a while, it will come in again. This audience wants to hear more about the visiting Sufi and his friends in meditation. But be discerning. Don't think of this as a normal character in an ordinary story. The ecstatic meditation ended. Dishes of food were brought out. Point 71. The Sufi remembered his donkey that had carried him all day. He called to the servant there, please, go to the stable and mix the barley generously with the straw for the animal. Please, don't worry yourself with such matters. All things have been attended to. But I want to make sure that you wet the barley first. He's an old donkey, and his teeth are shaky. Why are you telling me this I have given the appropriate orders? But did you remove the saddle gently, and put salve on the sword he has? I have served thousands of guests with these difficulties, and all have gone away satisfied. Here, you are treated as family. Do not worry, enjoy yourself. But did you warm his water just a little, and then add only a bit of straw to the barley? Sir, I'm ashamed for you. And please, sweep the stall clean of stones and dung, and scatter a little dry earth in it. For God's sake, sir, leave my business to me. And did you caricom his back? He loves that. Sir, I am personally responsible for all these chores. The servant turned and left at a brisk pace, to join his friends in the street. The Sufi then lay down to sleep and had terrible dreams about his donkey. How it was being torn to pieces by a wolf, or falling helplessly into a ditch. And his dreaming was right. His donkey was being totally neglected, weak and gasping, without food or water all the night long. The servant had done nothing he said he would. There are such vicious and empty flatterers in your life. Do the careful. Donkey tending work. Don't trust that to anyone else. There are hypocrites who will praise you, but who do not care about the health of your hard donkey. Be concentrated and leonine in the hunt for what is your true nourishment. Don't be distracted by blandishment noises, of any sort. The dog in the doorway. This is how it is when your animal energies, the knobs, dominate your soul. You have a piece of fine linen that you're going to make into a coat to give to a friend, but someone else uses it to make a pair of pants. The linen has no choice in the matter. It must submit. Or, it's like someone breaks into your house and goes to the garden and plants thorn bushes. An ugly humiliation falls over the place. Or, you've seen a nomad's dog lying at the tent entrance, with his head on the threshold and his eyes closed. 73. Children pull his tail and touch his face, but he doesn't move. He loves the children's attention and stays humble within it. But if a stranger walks by, he'll spring up ferociously.
Now, what if that dog's owner were not able to control it? A poor dervish might appear. The dog storms out. The dervish says, I take refuge with God when the dog of arrogance attacks, and the owner has to say, so do I. I'm helpless against this creature even in my own house. Just as you can't come close, I can't go out. This is how animal energy becomes monstrous and ruins your life's freshness and beauty. Think of taking this dog out to hunt. You'd be the quarry. The light you give off did not come from a pelvis. Your features did not begin in semen. Don't try to hide inside anger radiance that cannot be hidden. Tending to shops. Don't run around this world. Looking for a hole to hide in. There are wild beasts in ever cave. If you live with mice, the cat claws will find you. 74. The only real rest comes. When you're alone with God. Live in the nowhere that you came from, even though you have an address here. That's why you see things in two ways. Sometimes you look at a person and see a cynical snake. Someone else sees a joyful lover. And you're both right. Everyone is half and half, like the black and white ox. Joseph looked ugly to his brothers, and most handsome to his father. You have eyes that see from that nowhere, and eyes that judge distances, how high and how low. You own two shops, and you run back and forth. Try to close the one that's a fearful trap, getting always smaller. Checkmate, this way, checkmate that. Keep open the shop where you're not selling fish hooks anymore. You are the free swimming fish. Think that you're gliding out from the face of a cliff like an eagle. Think you're walking like a tiger walks by himself in the forest. You're most handsome when you're after food. Spend less time with nightingales and peacocks. One is just a voice, the other just a color. A 75. 7. So bad. J.I. Meetings on the riverbank. On S-O-H-B-E-T. Sobet has no English equivalent. It means something like, mystical conversation on mystical subjects. The voices in Rumi's poetry come from many points on the inner outer spectrum. The outer conversations are contained within quotation marks, and the inner ones are continuous and permeate the entire fabric of his poetry. On the most ordinary level, we all sometimes hear ourselves speaking from, say, some habitual pattern of meanness or acceptable optimism, then at other times we surprise ourselves by coming out with wisdom beyond our usual. There's a modulation between realities. This is similar to what happens with the fluid pronoun in Rumi's poetry. The you and I are sometimes the lover talking to the beloved, the personal self and a without form presence within and beyond the senses. Yet sometimes that presence, amazingly, speaks to Rumi through the poetry, voices slide back and forth within the same short poem. Often the poem serves as a slippery dorsal place between the two, partly in myself and partly outside, the voice is coming from a between place. This expanding and contracting of identity is one of the exciting aspects of Rumi's art. Everything is conversation. Human beings are discourse. That flowing moves through you whether you say anything or not. Everything that happens is filled with pleasure and warmth because of the delight of the discourse that's always going on. Discourse 53 Rumi's poetry mirrors back to us this ocean of woven speech too intricate and dynamic for any grammarian to untangle.
Y6. Talking in the night. In the middle of the night, I cried out, who lives in this love I have? You said, I do, but I'm not here alone. Why are these other images with me? I said, they are reflections of you, just as the beautiful inhabitants of Chijil and Turkestan resemble each other. You said, but who is this other living being? That is my wounded soul. Then I brought that soul to you as a prisoner. This one is dangerous. I said, don't let him off easy. You wink and gave me one end of a delicate thread. Pull it tight, but don't break it. I reached my hand to touch you. You struck it down. Why are you so harsh with me? For good reason, but certainly not to keep you away. Whoever enters this place saying here I am must be slapped. This is not a pen for sheep. There are no separating distances here. This is love sanctuary. Saladin is how the soul looks. Rub your eyes, and look again with love at love. Minus seven. Tyking through the door. You said, who's at the door? I said, your slave. You said, what do you want? To see you and bow. How long will you wait? Until you call. How long will you cook? Till the resurrection. We talked through the door. I claimed a great love and that I had given up what the world gives to be in that love. You said, such claims require a witness. I said, this longing, these tears. You said, discredited witnesses. I said, surely not. You said, who did you come with? The majestic imagination you gave me. Why did you come? The musk of your wine was in the air. What is your intention? Friendship. What do you want from me? Grace. Then you ask, where have you been most comfortable? In the palace. What did you see there? Amazing things. Then why is it so desolate? Because all that can be taken away in a second. Why yes? Who can do that? This clear discernment. Where can you live safely then? In surrender. What is this giving up? A peace that saves us. Is there no threat of disaster? Only what comes in your street, inside your love. How do you walk there? In perfection. Now silence. If I told more of this conversation, those listening would leave themselves. There would be no door, no roof or window either. A mouse and a frog. A mouse and a frog meet every morning on the riverbank. They sit in a nook of the ground and talk. Each morning, the second they see each other, they open easily, telling stories and dreams and secrets, empty of any fear or suspicious holding back. To watch and listen to those two is to understand how, as it's written, sometimes when two beings come together, Christ becomes visible. The mouse starts laughing out a story he hasn't thought of in five years, and the telling might take five years. There's no blocking the speech flow river running all carrying momentum that true intimacy is. Bitterness doesn't have a chance with those two. 79. The God Messenger, Peter, touches a roasted fish. It leaps off the grill back into the water. Friend sits by friend, and the tablets appear. They read the mysteries off each other's foreheads. But one day the mouse complains, there are times when I want Sabbath, and you're out in the water, jumping around where you can't hear me. We meet at this appointed time, but the text says, lovers pray constantly. Once a day, once a week, five times an hour, is not enough. 
fish like we are need the ocean around us. New camel bells say, let's meet back here Thursday night. Ridiculous. They jingle together continuously, talking while the camel walks. The UK regular visits to yourself. Don't argue or answer rationally. Let us die. And dying, reply. The long string. The mouse asks the beloved frog. Do you know what you are to me? During the day, you're my energy for working. At night, you're my deepest sleep. But could we be together outside of time as well as inside? Physically, we meet only at breakfast. Your absence during the rest of the day. 80. Enters all my cravings. I drink 500 times too much. Like a bulimic trying to die. I eat. Help me. I know I'm not worth it, but your generosity is so vast. Let your sunlight shine on this piece of dung, and dry it out, so I can be used for fuel to warm and light up a bathhouse. Look on the terrible and stupid things I've done, and cause herbs and eglantine to grow out of them. The sun does this with the ground. Think what glories God can make from the fertilizer of sinning. The mouse continues to beg, My friend, I know I'm ugly to you. I'm ugly to me, I'm perfectly ugly. But look, you'll be sad when I die, won't you? You'll sit by my grave and weep a little. All I'm asking is, be with me that little bit of time while I'm still alive. Now, I want you now. A certain rich man was accustomed to honor a Sufi by giving him pieces of silver. Would you like one piece of silver now, O oh Lord of my spirit, or three at breakfast tomorrow morning? The Sufi answered, I love the half a coin that I have already in my hand from yesterday more than the promise of a whole one. 8S. Today, or the promise of a hundred tomorrow. A Sufi is the child of this moment. Back to the mouse, who says, The slap of now has cash in its hand. Give me slaps, on the neck, anywhere. Soul of my soul of the soul or a hundred universes, be water in this now river, so jasmine flowers will lift on the brim, and someone far off can notice the flower colors and know there's water here. The sign is in the face. You can look at an orchard and tell if it rained last night. That freshness is the sign. Again, the mouse. Friend, I'm made from the ground, and for the ground. You're of the water. I'm always standing on the bank calling to you. Have mercy. I can't follow you into the water. Isn't there some way we can be in touch? A messenger. Some reminder. The two friends decided that the answer was a long, a longing. String, with one end tied to the mouse's foot and the other to the frog's, so that by pulling on it their secret connection might be remembered and the two could meet, as the soul does with the body. The frog-like soul often escapes from the body and soars in the happy water. Then the mouse body pulls on the string, and the soul thinks, damn. I have to go back on the riverbank and talk with that scatterbrained mouse. You'll hear more about this when you really wake up, on Resurrection Day. 82. So the mouse and the frog tied the string, even though the frog had a hunch some tangling was to come. Never ignore those intuitions. When you feel some slight repugnance about doing something, listen to it. These premonitions come from God. Remember the story of the military elephant who would not move toward the Kaaba. Paralyzed in that direction, yet swiftly pointed toward Yemen.
It had some in knowing from the unseen. So the prophet Jacob, when his other sons wanted to take Joseph out in the country for two days, had a heart sickness about their going, and it was true, though divine destiny prevailed, despite his foreboding. As it will. It's not always a blind man who falls in a pit. Sometimes it's one who can see. A holy one does sometimes fall, but by that tribulation, he or she ascends, escapes many illusions, escapes conventional religion, escapes being so bound to phenomena. Think of how phenomena come tripping out of the desert of non-existence into this materiality. Morning and night, they arrive in a long line and take over from each other, it's my turn now. Get out, a son comes of age, and the father packs up. This place of phenomena is a wide exchange of highways, with everything going all sorts of different ways. We seem to be sitting still, but we're actually moving, and the fantasies of phenomena are sliding through us like ideas through curtains. They go to the well. 83. A deep love inside each of us they fill their jars there, and they leave. There is a source they come from, and a fountain inside here. Be generous. Be grateful. Confess when you're not. We can't know what the divine intelligence has in mind. Who am I, standing in the midst of this thought traffic? The force of friendship. A sea cow, a new gong, finds a special pearl and brings it up on land at night. By the light it gives off the new gong can graze on hyacinths and lilies. The excrement of the dugong is precious ambergris because it eats such beauty. Anyone who feeds on majesty becomes eloquent. The bee, from mystic inspiration, fills its rooms with honey. So the dugong grazes at night in the pearl glow. Presently, a merchant comes and drops black loam over the pearl, then hides behind a tree to watch. The dugong surges about the meadow like a blind bull. Twenty times it rushes at nothing, passing the mound where the pearl is. So Satan couldn't see the spirit center inside Adam. God says, descend, and a huge pearl from Adam gets buried under dirt. The merchant knows, but the dugong doesn't. 84. Every clay pile with a pearl inside loves to be near any other clay pile with a pearl, but those without pearls cannot stand to be near the hidden companionship. Remember the mouse on the riverbank. There's a love string stretching into the water hoping for the frog. Suddenly a raven grips the mouse and flies off. The frog too, from the river bottom, with one foot tangled in invisible string, follows, suspended in the air. Amazed faces ask, when did a raven ever go underwater and catch a frog? The frog answers, this is the force of friendship. What draws friends together does not conform to laws of nature. Form doesn't know about spiritual closeness. If a grain of barley approaches a grain of wheat, an ant must be carrying it. A black ant on black belt. You can't see it, but if grains go toward each other, it's there. A hand shifts our bird cages around. Some are brought closer. Some move apart. Do not try to reason it out. Be conscious of who draws you and who not. Gabriel was always there with Jesus, lifting him above the dark blue vault, the night fortress world, just as the raven of longing carries the flying frog. The Vigil Don't go to sleep one night. What you most want will come to you then. Warmed by a sun inside, you'll see wonders. 
85. Tonight, don't put your head down. Be tough, and strength will come. That which adoration adores appears at night. Those asleep may miss it. One night Moses stayed awake and asked, and saw a light in a tree. Then he walked at night for ten years, until finally he saw the whole tree illuminated. Muhammad rode his horse through the night ski. The day is for work. The night for love. Don't let someone bewitch you. Some people sleep at night, but not lovers. They sit in the dark and talk to God, who told I have it. Those who sleep all night every night and claim to be connected to us, they lie. Lovers can't sleep when they feel the privacy of the beloved all around them. Someone who's thirsty may sleep for a little while, but he or she will dream of water, a full jar beside a creek, or the spiritual water you get from another person. All night, listen to the conversation. Stay up. This moment is all there is. Death will take it away soon enough. You'll be gone, and this earth will be left without a sweetheart, nothing but weeds growing inside thorns. I'm through. Read the rest of this poem in the dark tonight. Do I have a head? And feet? Shams, so loved by Tabrizians, I close my lips. I wait for you to come and open them. 86. Two friends. A certain person came to the friend's door and knocked. Who's there? One it's me. Quote. The friend answered. Go away. There's no place for raw meat at this table. The individual went wandering for a year. Nothing but the fire of separation can change hypocrisy and ego. The person returned completely cooked, walked up and down in front of the friend's house, gently knocked. Who is it? You. Quote. Please come in. Myself. There's no place in this house for two. The doubled end of the thread is not what goes through the eye of the needle. It's a single-pointed, fine down, thread end, not a big ego beast with baggage. But how can a camel be thin to a thread? With the shears of practices, with doing things, and with help from the one who brings impossibilities to pass, who quiets willfulness, who gives sight to one blind from birth. Every day that one does something, Take that as your text. Every day God sends forth three powerful energies. One, from the sperm of the father into the mother, so growth may begin. Two, a birth from the womb of the ground, so male and female may spring into existence. Three, there's a surge up from the surface into what is beyond dying that the real beauty of creating can be recognized. There's no way to ever say this. Let's return to the two friends whose thread became single, who spell with their two letters the original word. B. B and E tighten around subjects and objects that one knot may hold them. Two scissor blades make one cut. And watch TWD men washing clothes. One makes dry clothes wet. The other makes wet clothes dry. They seem to be thwarting each other, but their work is a perfect harmony. Every holy person seems to have a different doctrine and practice, but there's really only one work. Someone listening to a millstone falls asleep. No matter. The stone keeps turning. Water from the mountain far above the mill keeps flowing down. The sleepers will get their bread. Underground it moves, without sound, and without repetition. Show us where that source of speech is that has no alphabet. That spaciousness.
Where we are now is a narrow fantasy that comes from there, and the actual, outside world is even narrower. Narrowness is pain, and the cause of narrowness is maniness. Creation was spoken with one sound, B. The two letters, B and E, to record it. 88. Came after. The meaning of the sound and its resonance are one. There's no way to ever say this, in so many words. And no place to stop saying it. Meanwhile, a lion and a wolf were fighting. The servant W.H.O. loved his prayers. At dawn a certain rich man wanted to go to the steam baths. He woke his servant, sun poor, Ho! Get moving! Get the basin and the towels and the clay for washing and let's go to the baths. Sunpur immediately collected what was needed, and they set out side by side along the road. As they passed the mosque, the call to prayer sounded. Sunpur loved his five times prayer. Please, Master, rest on this bench for a while that I may recite Surah 98, which begins, You will treat your slave with kindness. The master sat on the bench outside while Suntur went in. When prayers were over, and the priest and all the worshippers had left, still Suntur remained inside. The master waited and waited. Finally he yelled into the mosque, Suntur, why don't you come out? I can't. This clever one won't let me. Have a little more patience. I hear you out there. Seven times the master waited. Eighty-nine. And then shouted. Sunther's reply was always the same. Not yet. He won't let me come out yet. In there but you. Everyone else has left. Who makes you sit still so long? But there's no one. The one who keeps me in here is the one who keeps you out there. The same who will not let you and will not let me out. The ocean will not allow its fish out of itself. Nor does it let land animals in where the subtle and delicate fish move. The land creatures lumber along on the ground. No cleverness can change this. There's only one opener for the lock of these matters. Forget your figuring. Forget yourself. Listen to your friend. When you become totally obedient to that one, you'll be free. Imru, El Kays. Imru, I Kays, king of the Arabs, was very handsome, and a poet, full of love songs. Women loved him desperately. Everyone loved him, but there came one night an experience that changed him completely. He left his kingdom and his family. He put on dervish robes and wandered from one weather, one landscape, to another. Love dissolved his king self and led him to Tabak, where he worked for a time making bricks. Someone told the king of Tabak about Imru, Ikeis, and the king went to visit him at night. King of the Arabs, handsome Joseph of this age, ruler of two empires, one composed of territories. 90. And the other of the beauty of women, if you would consent to stay with me, I would be honored. You abandon kingdoms, because you want more than kingdoms. The king of Tabak went on like this, praising Imrud, Ikeis, and talking theology and philosophy. Imrud, Ikeis kept silent. Then suddenly he leaned and whispered something in the second king's ear, and that second, that second king became a wanderer too. They walked out of town hand in hand. No royal belts, no thrones. This is what love does and continues to do. It tastes like honey to adults and milk to children. Love is the last 30-pound veil. 
When you load it on, the boat ticks over. So they wandered around China like birds pecking at bits of grain. They rarely spoke because of the dangerous seriousness of the secret they knew. That love secret spoken pleasantly, or in irritation, severs a hundred thousand heads in one swing. A love lion grazes in the soul's pasture, while the scimitar of this secret approaches. It's a killing better than any living. All that world power wants, really, is this weakness. So these kings talked in low tones, and carefully. Only God knows what they said. They used unsayable words. Bird language. But some people have imitated them, learned a few bird calls, and gotten prestigious. 9 feet. All rivers at once. Don't unstring the bow. I am your poor feathered arrow that has not been used yet. I am a strong knife blade word, not some if or maybe, dissolving in air. I am sunlight slicing the dark, who made this knife? A forge deep in the earth mud. What is the body? Endurance. What is love? Gratitude. What is hidden in our chests? Laughter. What else? Compassion. Let the beloved be a hat pulled down firmly on my head. Or drawstrings pulled and tied around my chest. Someone asks, how does love have hands and feet? Love is the sprouting bed for hands and feet. Your father and mother were playing love games. They came together, and you appeared. Don't ask what love can make or do. Look at the colors of the world. The river water moving in all rivers at once. The truth that lives in Sham's face. 92. The blocked road. I wish I knew what you wanted. You block the road and won't give me rest. You pull my lead rope one way, then the other. You act cold, my darling. Do you hear what I say? Will this night of talking ever end? Why am I still embarrassed and timid about you? You are thousands. You are one. Quiet, but most articulate. Your name is Spring. Your name is Wine. Your name is the nausea that comes from wine. You are my doubting in the light points. In my eyes. You are every image, and yet I'm homesick for you. Can I get there, where the deer pounces on the lion, where the one I'm after's after me? This drum and these words keep pounding. Let them both smash through their coverings into silence. A babbling child. If my words are not saying what you would say, slap my face. Discipline me as a loving mother does a babbling child caught up in nonsense. A thirsty man runs into the sea, and the sea holds a sword to his throat. 93. A lily looks at a bank of roses and wilts and says nothing. I am a tambourine, don't put me aside till the fast dancing starts. Play me some all along. Help me with these little sounds. Joseph is most beautiful when he's completely naked, but his shirt gives you an idea, as the body lets you glimpse the glitter on the water of the soul. Even if the corpse washer birds my jaw shut, you'll still hear this song coming out of my dead silence. Who sees inside from outside? Who finds hundreds of mysteries even where minds are deranged? See through his eyes what he sees. Who then is looking out from his eyes? Constant conversation. Who is luckiest in this whole orchestra? The reed. Its mouth touches your lips to learn music. All reeds, sugarcane especially, think only of this chance. They sway in the cane breaks, free in the many ways they dance. Without you the instruments would die. One sits close beside you. 
Another takes a long kiss. The tambourine begs, touch my skin so I can be myself. Let me feel you enter each limb bone by bone, that what died last night can be whole today. 94. Why live some sober away and feel you ebbing out? I won't do it. Either give me enough wine or leave me alone, now that I know how it is to be with you in a constant conversation. Bonfire at midnight. A shout comes out of my room where I've been cooped up. After all my lust and dead living I can still live with you. You want me to. You fix and bring me food. You forget the way I've been. The ocean moves and surges in the heat of the middle of the day, in the heat of this thought I'm having. Why aren't all human resistances burning up with this thought? It's a drum and arms waving. It's a bonfire at midnight on the top edge of a hill, this meeting again with you. In between stories, turn from the ocean now toward dry land. When you're with children, talk about toys. From playthings, little by little, they reach into deeper wisdom and clarity. Gradually, they lose interest in their toys. They have a sense of wholeness in them already. If they were completely demented, they wouldn't play at all. Did you hear that? It's the man who is looking for treasure. 95. He wants me to finish his story. You didn't hear him. Then he must be inside me yelling, over here. Come over here. Don't think of him as a seeker, though. Whatever he's looking for.